Rub up your engines! Okay, today we got an 03 Forerunner. It's an interesting one. It's got a V8 engine. It's got 273,000 miles. The guy's owned it for 12 years. He bought it used. He loves it. Matter of fact, he just went and bought a new one for his wife because he doesn't want the newfangled one. So he got the last good model you can buy. And he said, you're going to keep that for four or 500,000 miles too. It's got a couple noises he wants to know about, which you'll figure out later, but... As you look under the hood, you can see what makes it interesting. It's the infamous Toyota 4.7 V8 that can run forever. The only downside is, of course, it has a rubber timing belt. So you're supposed to change that every 100,000 miles. That's the only downside. Well, it does have another downside. The gas mileage isn't very good because it's a big V8 heavy vehicle. That's not what you buy these for. Even the V6s are gas hogs. And the Forerunners, they're heavy vehicles. Now, this one isn't all that bad because it's just rear wheel drive. So sometimes on the highway, you can get like 18 miles a gallon, and that's as good as you're going to get with a big old wheel like this. But it runs. You can pull all kinds of stuff with it. And of course, you can never buy another one of these because they haven't put V8 engines in these things for quite some time. Now, as you can see, this is a limited. This is the fancy one. And hey, the seats are good. Got a little tape on this side. You could put seat covers on if you wanted. But you can see why people bought these things. Room everywhere. And you want to carry stuff? Hey, if that's not big enough, drop these seats down too, and you'll have all kinds of room. It's basically like an enclosed pickup truck. Now, as I said, this baby was made in Japan, so it's the best ones that they ever make. The ones made in Japan with a V8 engine. Really, other than the gas mileage, it's got about anything anybody would want in a vehicle like this. Yeah, it's not uh, a Lexus or an Acura uh, with a cushy ride. The ride is decent, but it's really a truck. My oh my, an actual frame, and it's a frame made in Japan. Unlike the Tundras and Tacomas that were full frame made in the United States with American built frames that have rotted away and people were furious about it, these frames are made in Japan, they never had problems with any of them. It is a solid vehicle. You could basically drive this vehicle forever, fix it. I had a guy in Houston that had one. He got hit in the middle. He got T-boned. And instead of fixing it, he took the insurance money and he drove it. And I mean, it was bent in about this far in the middle. You couldn't climb in on the passenger side, but he was still driving a thing down the road. I mean, these things are solid. As long as that frame isn't broken, you can just keep driving them and driving them and driving them. Now he's hearing a rattle in the front. It came with 16s, then the guy had it for him put 18s, and now he's gone back to 17s. And once they put these 17s on, he started hearing some rattling. So let's jack it up and look inside. First thing we'll do is take it for a spin, literally. I can hear it as it turns around. There it is. As it spins, click, click. Well, that was an easy one. The rotor's somewhat warped. <laughs> It's got a ridge on it. When it gets to the ridge spots, it makes the brake pads click. And of course, with the weight of the cars on, it's going to accentuate the noise. So I noticed he had a brake job done and stuff, but the rotors are old. Does it mean anything? You can see they're relatively flat, but as I put my finger on the top, it's all rusty as can be because they're old. Now, I wouldn't waste my time for that little noise. But if it drives them crazy, you can buy new rotors. <laughs> now, the other noise he has is the suspension noise. You hit certain bumps and you hear it. He went to a Toyota dealer. They wanted 4,000 bucks to do a whole bunch of stuff. So he said, oh, I'll do it myself. So instead of 4,000, he spent a couple hundred, changed the control arm, same exact noise. Then they said, oh, it's the sway bar and links and the bushings. So he did that himself for 20 bucks. The noise is still there. Then he took it back to him again. And they said, we want to make this right. We're going to have the manager talk to you. He calls up. Can I speak to the owner? No. He got the sales guy, right? And the owner never called back. They said he'd call him back. Then they said, I want to make it right. We'll get our best mechanic to ride with you. Well, guess what? The best mechanic did not ride with him. He wasted three hours of his time. And the noise is still there. So I like the Toyota dealer. The best mechanic, me, is actually going to go for a ride. We're going to listen to the noise first, which they never did. So first we have to find a bumpy road. So we're going to head out to the country. Here we go out in the country that's being turned into suburbia. We'll see if we can get to make the noise. Yeah, that's the rotor over there. That clacking that we hear. We already know that. We really don't care. But he's talking about a clunk. 
there it is. Now this is why you'd like one of these with the V8 engine in it. Yes, it gets up and goes. That's V8 power now, his wife's new one. It's the last of the V6s, which is still good, but boy, this thing picks them up and puts them down. Now, he put these one-piece shock strut assembly on it, but it came from 1A Auto, and I'm always suspicious of those things. Let's see what happens when we drop it. I can hear it. Well, I hear it creaking. And see, now that it's expanded the whole way, the noise is gone. This is one reason I'm always leery about whole replacement suspension parts like struts, spring assemblies. The original Toyota ones are really well made and they're also very expensive. And they don't sell whole units, you buy by piece by piece. He replaced the whole thing. He doesn't have the box anymore, so I'm guessing it was made in China. And that's what that noise is. And you could see it makes it going up, going down. Once it's fully up, it stops because the rubber stretched the whole way. Now when you hit the bump, and it comes back down, then it makes the creak again. And that's what's doing it. There's actually nothing wrong with it, it's not playing, just like the brake rotor. He hits the brakes at 60, they don't shake, they don't pull, they're fine, they're just a little bit worn, so they make that little noise. But the creaking he's hitting is these struts. Now, it may have been affected by changing the tire size, because he did go from a bigger to a smaller tire. Now, realize one thing. Tires actually do more shock absorbing than your shock absorbing system, the rubber. It takes a lot of the shocks. He went from a bigger to a smaller tire. Guess what? A bigger tire absorbs shocks better. <laughs> so, going to a smaller tire, it makes sense. It made, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, though. I mean, I wouldn't bother changing it out and buying new ones, because the new ones are probably crazy. It's, they're made in China, they'll all do the same, but there's nothing wrong with it. It just expands, you can hear the rubber creak, and then when it goes back down, compresses you, the rubber creak. Ah, no biggie. Though, if you are a noise fanatic, stay away from these aftermarket units because they often make noise. I tried one, a customer bought one for their Lexus. I put it all together, and guess what the car did? Instead of sitting like this, it was now sitting too high because the stupid spring was made rough and it was too high and it rode rougher. And then I thought, why is it riding rougher? Well, it turns out that the Lexus springs, you'd think they're cheaper because they were thinner. The springs were much thinner steel and the cheap Chinese one was actually a lot thicker steel. Well, guess what? Thick steel doesn't absorb the bounces as good as thin steel. Did a better job, and the thick steel made it sit too high. So be very leery about those aftermarket things. As for the 4Runner, man, with this V8 engine in it, hey, I wouldn't mind getting my hands on one of these. Hey, it gets up and goes. You could tow like a maniac with this thing with that engine. And it's only a baby with 273,000 miles, so hey, it'll probably go another 273,000 miles with that solid frame, even if it gets in a wreck. You can either fix it or just drive it wrecked as long as the frame isn't bent. <laughs> That's how well made these things are from Japan. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Shadow Man says, Scotty, should I worry about shops I bring my cars to using cheap aftermarket parts? Yeah, if you, you know, you got to talk to the guys working in your car and explain. I don't want cheap Chinese parts. I'll pay more, or if that's what you deal with, tell me what part I need and I'll buy the part and you can put it on. That'll change their tune, you know. They always mark the stuff up. Uh, you don't want cheap aftermarket parts. You got to find honest mechanics. There's a lot of crooks out there. I admit it. You know, I've seen so many crooked mechanics out there. They'll buy some cheap Chinese part for twenty dollars and then tell you it's an OEM and charge one hundred and twenty for the part that they paid that tiny amount for. Kind of disgusting, but. You got to find a mechanic you can trust because any mechanic can pull a wool over your eyes if they really want to. Uh, most people don't know that much about cars. So you got to find a guy like me, an honest guy who's going to explain it all and say, hey, you know, some aftermarket parts are good. Some are absolute garbage. And if they're going to use garbage Chinese parts, they'll come back. And then the dishonest ones will say, oh, yeah, well, now you got another problem. But you don't. You got the same problem because the part they put on didn't work. And then they'll charge you money to replace the thing that they already replaced and then tell you they did something else. You have have to find an honest mechanic. There's no way about it. Honest mechanics will explain it. I explain to people, look, good parts cost good money. Now, if you want cheap Chinese parts, I just say, go ahead, buy it yourself. I'll put it on. I guarantee I put it on, right? But uh, if it breaks, don't come screaming at me because I told you a lot of that stuff's junk. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.